New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning on Hot 97. The good brother, Mike Epps. What's going down? E What's Bree. happening, man? What's up, Ebro? Yo, you got Breezy. your vacation shirt on, baby. Hey, man, it's a vacation, wait, man. You got, so, wait, you on? You just got married. Is this the Friday? I just got back from the honeymoon this shirt. This official honeymoon shirt yeah. right here. Yeah. I had it on for three days. Yeah. Smell like a cab driver. <laughs> Right. A lot of people skip. I think the BET Awards because of that. Was it Snoop at your wedding? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, That's a couple. So couple guys. Why came you do the BET Awards like that, man? <laughs> they didn't invite me. Ooh, now we get the truth. No, they didn't invite. I mean, it it, it wasn't that I did them like that. I didn't know when the BET Awards were, you know. And we just set the wedding, and it just happened to fall on the same day. Right, but you right, know, right. I love I love BET. Of course, I'm always working with BET. But uh, yeah, man, it was it was it was it was lit, man. We had the whispers there. Of course, you did. They still got the mustaches. One of them cut the hair off. One of them got a bald head. They still got the mustaches. Okay. One of them tried to whisper to my girl. I said, "Now wait, man. I know you're one of the whispers. <laughs> <laughs> but hold up, now, man. <laughs> How they sound? How the whispers sound? Those man, so shit. good, they brother. No, no. Um, what Auto they? Tune no, or... none of that tape. You know how some of them singers be using them little. Background the tracks, uh, tracks. Yeah. These dudes were singing, man. My my grandma, my mother was sitting over there wiggling, and I said, "Oh man, this is crazy, man." <laughs> so it was beautiful, man. God is good. Now, I'm telling you. You're from um, originally from Milwaukee, right? Is In, Mil Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. And um, you still got family out there? Oh yeah, I got a hundred cousins. My grandmother, it was ten of them, and and each kid had at least five to six kids. Mm -hmm. So I got, I had. 400 people at my wedding. Oh, wow. my God. And 300 of them was my family. And how many of them asked for money? You know, I got a few here and there. <laughs> I got a few here and there. And I, I got a good heart. I always look out for my family. Of you course. know what I mean? I don't never look at it that way. Wait, so when it goes like I that, you know how back. usually at weddings, the family, well, people who attend the wedding have to give you money? <laughs> how does it work at your wedding? Well, we didn't accept no gifts. Okay, okay. You know, we just, I didn't want to look at that. I didn't yeah. want no gifts, but... There were a few people that wanted me to fly them to the wedding. And oh, I'm like, okay, it don't okay. work like that, man. <laughs> I, this is my, and me and my girl's day. I can't fly you to my wedding, man. Right, right, right. Is you I'm crazy? I'm telling you, you don't got to give me a gift. put me up and, uh, yeah. Man, who the hell are you? Put you up and fly you to my wedding? Oh, my God. You should have saved for this, man. Yeah, this my day. That's my you day. You know what I've been through to get here? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I couldn't sleep. I didn't sleep. You know, it was rough, but it now, was... Now, talk, talk, uh, talk savages like myself yeah. through getting to that day to get married, right? Because yeah. I have never... Never did it? No. Never mar I, got married? No. Yeah. I ain't never proposed. Said, no. I ain't never had a fiancé. I ain't never bought a ring. I've Man. never even had a serious conversation other than to tell somebody that's not what we doing. Right. Because you be tripping. Yeah. On that path. Yeah. Talk. An animal like myself. Talk to you about it. Yeah. Well, you know. Because you used to be out here. So That's right. That's right. But it's it's all about an individual now. You know, the Bible say that, a, you know, a, a good man is not a good man without a woman. That's fact. Super good fact. woman. You know what I mean? But is there and, a way to, for me to have a good woman without actually signing papers, getting fingerprinted, and giving half of my shit up? Well, you know what? The reality of it is, is that it is a business. It's a business too, and sometimes you, 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 if you, if you're in love with your partner, if you a fair person, period, you want to break bread. That's right. You, I go down the, I go down. This is how much I love you. I'll go straight down the middle with you, and whatever happen, happen. I ain't never lived for money anyway. So if you call yourself taking the money, you know, I don't even think like that. If you my partner, we're going to go straight down the middle with it. You know what I mean? And whatever, if you got some money from me, so what? I don't care. But I'm going to be true to who I am to you. That I love you, and uh, that's all I'm thinking about. I ain't thinking about you taking nothing from me or none of that because I know the, I know the price. There is no price on love. It's so precious, and it feels so good, and it's a joyous feeling to love somebody. And have a partner, a woman. He's preaching. Not a whole bunch of. I didn't ran with a hundred dudes where we was all together and just women bash. We, you know what I mean? We pimping and all that. And man, it. I end up in debt. 
cases, all kind of crazy. Now, what you're stuff. saying right there is super facts, right? I don't no, think a man. lot of men process that. Yeah. That you hanging out with but your But I'm boys. 48 too now. So right. it's an age. It took it took a while to get there. I was a late bloomer, but it took a minute for me to get here to start thinking like that. But now, you're, when you're in love, though. No, this ain't my first okay, okay. go round. Uh, you know, and it ain't my first go round too. So. But a lot of people, what you said is key though. Yeah. You running around with your boys. Yeah. Y'all hanging out. Yeah. Fucking randos, doing whatever it is you're doing. Right. Claiming you pimping and uh, whatever and you're popping, doing. You know, Make you feel whatever this, you all feel. This. Yeah. And you're looking at your bank account or what they're contributing to your life and uplifting you. Yeah. And if you really took inventory, right. It ain't shit going on. You feel when me? When you're in a relationship and you're in love, you and that person, hopefully, if it's the right person, that's right, are complimenting one another and trying to build a healthy, happy family, family, <coughs> financial structure, the whole thing. No doubt. So I think that's a, a key. But they got guys like yourself, and I've seen it. You know, I had uncles and stuff like that. I had an uncle named Uncle Andy. I've never seen him married. You know what I mean? He had a Chinese woman that was. His, I guess it was his wife, but you know some guys can take care of themselves and maintain that, and and never look like they look bad because they didn't have a woman or they didn't get married. Mm. Some guys don't know how to take care of themselves. They need mama. Right. They need a mama. They need backup. to get money. Right, right, right. To maintain their uh, uh, health, all of that. You need mama. Some guys need mama, and some guys know how to do it without mama. And just have a little, they date a little bit. They got a woman over, <laughs> you know, I can't do it right now. You know, I got <laughs> fellas like that, yeah, <laughs> that treat a woman like a woman would treat, like a woman would treat a man. Right, right, right. This, this is a guy. Right, right, right. Uh, no, uh, I can't do it right now, yeah, ladies. Yeah, yeah. I, nah, I really don't like her right now. I guess I go home, fellas, you know. I'm going to leave it alone, blah, blah, blah. I say, man, how do you do that? You, you ain't got no woman. Your house look like a woman live here. <laughs> Don't no woman live here. How are you half woman, half man? Yeah, yeah. So, Cause you washing your clothes. I mean, I'm talking about your house. You act like a woman sometimes. Well, I not mean, you. No, I'm. I'm but just I got saying. partners like, like that. Well, no, I, I'm, I'm hiring I got a housekeeper. Part- I'm hiring a housekeeper. But even if I was in a relationship, yeah. you know, I was. My dad was in the pen. So, so that's how I you, was. It, I was cleaning the bathroom. Right, my dad they, was like, get in and, there, clean yeah, the bathroom, they clean. clean, scrub the toilet, <laughs> scrub this floor, yeah, yeah. fold these clothes, that's the carry dude. this laundry down here to the laundry. The penitentiary sure dude is that dude. Yeah, they, <laughs> all day. Because they got to clean up their cell, they got to learn how to do it. And when everything. you go to the joint, you realize that there's some mama inmates and there's some daddy inmates. And the mama inmates is usually the ones that the young brothers get up under. <laughs> He cooking in the cell and you know Makes what I mean? everybody eating. Yeah, and clean. And it'll beat yeah. you up if you in the cell and don't clean too. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, we clean in here. You know what I mean? Yeah, we nah. flush and dump. We I do was all right that. In and then I also had a mother who was like, your chores, your this. Yeah. After seven years old, I don't cook for you no more. You got to learn. Seven? Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Damn. She would make she would make breakfast and then you had mean, lunch, you had school. Damn. But at night, my mom was working. So, so seven, you yeah. had options in the fridge that you had. So to you learn basically to... grew up in the penitentiary in the house. <laughs> your dad was in the pen, your mom was running it like a CO. Y'all wasn't eating until seven. Look, you had you had your mate, you had you had your cook. That's why you so crazy, yeah, bro. Right? <laughs> His house was the penitentiary, nah, nah, man. We had the TV dinner, remember the hungry man? Yeah, the hungry yeah. man. Where the apple With that corn. Oh man. Why the apple stay hot so long, man? Why the apple price stay hot? Hungry so man, them, for them, that corn and the <laughs> potatoes. Yeah. I don't even know what a Salisbury steak is. Do they even serve that? That's just like hamburger meat. That ain't no steak. That's that was Salisbury a- steak. God, that was bad. Oh, that was oh, a cold and hungry man, man. And they had the gravy under the plastic. You had to peel the plastic up to get That's the gravy out. That's straight cancer. Yeah. Straight. You know what I mean? That's straight cancer. People that be eating them is straight up eating uh-huh. cancer. Yo, it is. Fake food. It's fake food. That's why. Straight it's up. fake food. And now it's even worse. We used to have to put it in the oven. You had to preheat, know how to preheat, preheat the oven it. at 375. <laughs> and you and your brother was in there like, is it hot? I don't oh, know. Let me put it in there. Let's and it look it. hot until you get in the middle of it and it's cold. Oh, the potatoes, you're like, oh, man, I got to heat it up again, man. <laughs> 
Oh, that apple. I remember that, that apple, apple, man. Burn you every time. Oh, oh man. If you wait until the last, for some reason, that apple shit was hot as shit. Yeah, man. Mike Epps, uh, listen, uh, why are you here anyway? Just come hang out? No, I got a I got a show on Netflix called Only One Mic. I did a comedy special, yeah, called One Mic. I thought you just came oh, to see us dope. and laugh. Hey man, I I'll do that too. You know what I'm saying? Wait, is, you know is I'm live an right now? Fan. We can watch it right now. Huh? Is the comedy special live right now on Netflix? Yeah, it's oh, on nice. Netflix right now. If you if you got Netflix, you can see it. See it. It was it wasn't on the popular page, but I guess people start watching it and they seen that it got a little traction. And they put it on the popular page. Now, I've seen you do stand-up, me personally. I'm a fan, so I've seen you probably do stand-up 10 or 15 times. My man. In my life. Yeah. And I've definitely been at shows where somebody pissed you off. Yeah. <laughs> Some of those is my favorite show. <laughs> Wait, I've never experienced this. What happened? Now, it doesn't happen a lot, but I might know. He's a professional. Mike, no, Mike will be up there clowning. Mike, Mike only wants to have fun. <laughs> No, sometimes Mike only people... wants to have fun, but he not the guy that you gonna act stupid with. <laughs> All right, so what happens at these shows? No, sometimes people just. Only time I get upset is if people are rude to the people that are sitting in there trying to watch the show. Right. Okay. okay. You know, if somebody's just, I'm, and then I'll just stop and tell them, man, look where the light is pointing at. It ain't on you. Let me, because people behind them be wanting to tell jokes. People be hollering out. Yeah, you know, yeah, some yeah. people, you could tell people that be at the shows that don't never come to comedy shows. Somebody just brought an uncle that don't come out with him, and he just yelling, <laughs> standing up. I'm like, you could tell this dude don't go to shows. You know, they got an outfit on him, and he yeah. keep jumping up. My girl! I'm like, man, <laughs> sit down. Now, and Mike, Mike is one of those comedians that does a job of trying to include them in the fun, too. Like, I've seen you do that, too. Where you'll be like, okay, I, I'm going to include you for a minute, but then now, okay, listen, man. Wait, I'm has not... anybody ever tried to get tough with you? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you yeah. had to get, get security to get them out. Yeah. Security going to come after I get on them. <laughs> See, I knew he was, I wasn't going to bring it up, but. I'm security. You know what I mean? And I don't claim to be tough, but if I hit you first, I'm getting out of there. <laughs> yeah, I get, because you know the hard thing about being a comedian is that you dare to make people laugh. Right. But comedians are so insecure about people messing with them. You know, ain't that something? We comedians and we, they say comedians are the real gangbangers. Like, we are crazy. Like, comedians are off the hook. In the mind, you know, because we really insecure because we really make people happy. You know what I mean? We make people laugh and stuff. So people underestimate that. People walk up to you and do stuff. Like I was in Whole Foods, man, about a month ago, and I felt something do like that on my ear when I turned hey, around. Hey, 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 man, hey, it was a hey, dude standing hey, there man, and no, thumped my ear. Hey, man. Hey, man. And when I turned around, I hey, said, what's wrong with you? He was like, ain't you dated? I said, man... If you touch me one more time, we're gonna tear this whole fools up. He was like, I didn't, I thought you, I was like, you can't touch me, man. Oh What's God. wrong with you? Hey, listen, we got a thing on this show, man. People we are talk crazy. talk about it all the time, cause I'll be walking around the street, you know, people, you know how they do like this when they're not sure if it's you and they be looking at you? It's like, speak, man. It's like, man. You got to hey, speak to me. Right, yeah. You got to ask them that, right? I only got to cut. It's only a couple of seconds, <laughs> seconds for me to make some decisions. <laughs> I got to make decisions. Yeah, they be doing it. <laughs> I need you to smile, <laughs> man. And, don't, and the other one where they want to call you across. Hey, 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 Mike. Hey, yeah. man, don't call me from across hey, the street, like, man. No, what hey, the fuck is wrong yeah. with you, man? Hey, man. That's so disrespectful. And then you want me to come to you. Yeah. Hey, man, come on. Hey, what the fuck is going on, bro? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. Yeah. I do that. I'll be like, hey, man, what the fuck is wrong with yeah, you, man? Yeah, come on. Why are you talking to me like that, man? But you know that's the business, and, 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 and that's why I kind of stopped talking about people in my comedy because well, one time a dude was messing with me, and I got upset. He said, well, you talk about people in your comedy. I said, and he was right. You know what I mean? <laughs> You it was. Be, that's my job, motherfucker. Yeah, that's what I should have said. But that's why I was looking at Wendy Williams. I I love Wendy Williams, you know what I mean? But I was looking at her like, man, that's the only thing about talking to having a job about talking about people. If something happened to you, <sighs> listen, people are looking at you listen, like all respect to Wendy Williams. What the hell happened to you? you know, all respect. Yeah. 
She made it her bi- all this world star, all this tabloid yeah. shit, all this shit we seen. That was her business. She started. She the yeah, she the she godmother was, of oh yeah all of that media takeout, all of that. This is the realest when the chickens come home to roost. You don't ever seen yeah in modern times. But it can happen to anybody. It can happen to a rapper. Anybody that is is a reporter of people or of things or places. You know? Yeah, but she tore people Even down. She too. took a negative... She was a negative slant. Like, it wasn't just a report with Wendy, right? right? It was like she would take a negative slant on people and go at things with a certain thing and judgmental and, you know, these other things. Well, she was selling it, and I think the people wouldn't have bought it if she didn't do that, you know? Oh, and no, she was very that was, successful. Yeah, that was the sale. That was the sale. That's like trying to tell a heroin dealer... Put a little bit more cut on it so they won't really, really get high. But they still going to get high. It's right. still heroin. You know what I mean? But um, that's the real deal, man. But it, it's hard being an entertainer, especially in 2019, man. They got so much going on. Everybody's trying to come up off of each other. And people are just going down for anything, for nothing. I always tell people that I'm hood proof. I'm glad that I was a... A uh, regular person before I got in entertainment, so I know what real life is. I know what going to work, coming home, and enjoying watching the game, having dinner. I know what I know how to enjoy regular life. Mm-hmm. I didn't grow up in show business. I didn't really get famous till I was 27, 28 years old. So by the time I got to it, I had already experienced real life. I'm like, man. So whatever I get in this business is a is extra, I won. Right. yeah. I won. It's a plus. That's why when I still see entertainers, I don't say it, but I can be starstruck because I have to pinch myself and say, "You in it too?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I say, I be like, "Man, I'm still in it." And I don't, you gotta calm down. You know, Mike. I tell myself, "You gotta calm down," because you in show business too. But I be like, "Damn, I forget." I'm looking at him like, "Man, that's somebody that I would win." A, because I remember seeing entertainers before I got in show business, and I felt so embarrassed. Because one time I seen Too Short in Atlanta, and he had to tell me, man, you got to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day, he still remember that. And he be seeing me out, he be just looking at me, smiling like, boy, you don't remember you was jocking me. I, I seen Too Short one time, man. I chased this nigga around the club. What did you say? I was just telling him, man, I'm a comedian, man, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm the shit. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be fun. He was like, nigga, I don't know you. You need to calm down, relax, get the fuck out of my face. He was with Aunt Banks. <laughs> Aunt Banks. It was in the, Aunt Banks, it was in the yeah. '90s. It was like Girl, 91, 90. Boy, I'm oh telling you, God. chase this nigga around the club. <laughs> <laughs> and now when I see him, I don't give a... I, I be at the BT Awards, and they it, everybody... Ah, he just be looking at me like, <laughs> groupy-ass nigga right here made it to show business. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, man, Mike Epps, man. <laughs> Yo, are you, you, so you gonna do Friday again? What's the story, man? What, what's happening? You and Q, what, what we doing, man? Man, you know what? Uh, uh, that's all, that's uh, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Ice Cube, he has the full control over that movie. But he says that we're gonna do another one. So you're if if it's right you're in that's it man, Don Mega that's my Cube my partner man Cube my big brother I'm always down with Cube he gave me my start uh, it's about getting all the other ones involved Chris Tucker and all them dudes you I know. think I saw a headline Cube saying that Tucker wasn't going well, if we do it more it's not gonna happen well I mean you know I guess that's his decision you know but that's what the people want to see yeah. Okay. The people would love to see Chris Tucker <clears throat> in the movie because he made it. Yeah, He made the first one. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have never got a shot. Right, And he was so good in it, it's kind of almost hard to do it without him. I mean, we've done it without him, but, yeah. man, to... To come back after... Yeah, Chris like Tucker, a... if you hear this interview, come on back, brother. We need you, man. Funny now, dude, man. Funny dude. You went on uh, to do amazing movies. And and go beyond being funny. Yeah. Right. And play other thing and do other things. Right. Yeah. Um, I did. Was there a combo around you doing Richard Pryor too? Yep, we was gonna do Richard Pryor, man. And uh, what happened? 
it was a it was one of the Weinstein projects. Uh oh, that's so not gonna... when the Weinstein company went down, all the projects that was a part of the company went down as well. What can we What can we do? Like that's a, that sounds like that's something like, like what can we do to make sure somebody else get on that? That's the that's the, you know his wife has the control over it and uh, you know I just back I'll just back off of that man. You know what I mean? That was something that I wanted to do. They actually. Uh, have ran around. Lee Daniels was going to direct it. And they actually ran around and promoted it, told everybody I was going to do it, got everybody hyped, and then it didn't happen. And the whole world been looking at me like, what happened to Richard Pryor? And I'm, I'm looking at them Actually like... Done fucked up the Richard Pryor movie. Yeah, they looking at me like... Uh, I'm looking <laughs> at them like, uh, I've been Mike Epps the whole time. Y'all was waiting on this. I'm, I'm still doing that. Right. You know what I mean? Any any other movies you working on right now? Yeah, I got a movie in the theaters now called The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Yo, that's right. I want to see movie? that, man. I oh, saw that trailer. About, it's about Yo, listen, it's about gentrification. It's one of the realest. Because yeah. you know what San Francisco is going right, through right, right, right now right. with gentrification. Yo, it's one of the... The trailer was incredible. Oh, yeah, it's a great movie. So it's out? I didn't know it's it came a, out. Yeah, it's out. It's only in... Uh, limited theaters, but it's getting rave reviews. Yo, listen. Might be good enough. Last Oscar. man in San... Last black man Last in Last black man in San Francisco. Look, man, I'm telling y'all. It's about gentrification. Yeah. And, and it's really happening all over the world. Yes, it is. And this was a this is a movie to show the effect of it for a black man. See, they talking about gentrification, but they not telling the true story of what it is doing to... The inner city black people who have lived in these neighborhoods. This is all they got. This is all they taking these houses from them. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't, yo, that those houses, going, yeah, going. those houses back in the day, when we look at those videos and stuff, and you see the drug dealers with uh, Mercedes Benzes and stuff in front of these raggedy houses that was crack houses. Those houses are now worth millions of dollars. The, they were five dollars a piece then. When black people was living in these communities, they didn't know that them houses were dirt cheap and were going to become very, very wealthy houses. Meaning that uh, the Europeans had a 20-year plan, which they always do on black people. It's 20 years. They plan out 20 years, 30 years from you. You don't even know what they're going to do. That's what they had planned. So while we was running around selling crack, shooting up, making these houses, crack houses, and not paying attention. And them houses was $6 a piece then. They cost a half a million dollars because they then took and pushed all the black people out in them houses and communities they used to live in because they don't want to commute to downtown anymore. Proximity. Proximity, because the downtowns of every city in America are back they, suburbs is over. The suburbs is over. So now black people <laughs> is out there in these suburbs like, man, I got a mansion. I'm renting a mansion for $700 or $650, and I got six bedrooms. I got a pool. They don't even know this is about and, to be the but, hood. And you got to drive. You got to get expensive gas. You got to pay car insurance. Meanwhile, rich folks is like, you know what? Ride my I'm about bike to ride to my, I'm about to skateboard across the street. Did you hear work. me? That's and that's And that's what this movie's about. And the white people are not doing the history on the houses. So now they in the houses, and some drug dealer that got killed in the 90s is hunting their kids. Got a troop jacket on, a kango, and a rope. <laughs> kids can't sleep because it's a, a 90s That's drug a dealer movie, that got That's killed. That's not this movie, though. That's a different movie. That's a Mike Epps spinoff. <laughs> about about ghosts. yeah about gangbanger ghosts <laughs> in, in the Fillmore. <laughs> Fo yeah. Rapping Fote. Yeah, yo, <laughs> yo, that's a different movie, different time. Great film though. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, that's a great spoof. And I'm film. in another movie called Dolomite with Eddie Murphy. Wait, does that have? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You're not just Dolomite. whoa. You know about that, Dolomite. I, I saw Dolomite. Rudy Ray a Moore. Movie. Yeah. I know Rudy Ray Moore, um, but I did not know that Eddie Murphy Played. and Mike Epps was doing Dolomite. Oh, yeah. Me, Eddie Murphy, Wesley Snipes. Uh, it's a gang of us. T.I. This? this is shot already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the trailer and everything. It's it's, it's just a good movie, man. It's going to come out in uh 
It's gonna come out in uh, uh, um, in August. I'm um, wait. The trailer's public. Uh, no, nah, no, nah, the trailer ain't public. I got to show it right now. An exclusive on Hot 97, or Eddie will get mad. Uh, well, I mean, I can show it to you, exclusive. <laughs> That's it. But, All right, so it's coming out in August. Yeah, it come out. Now, in... I, wait, don't, wait, we're gonna watch it after the interview. Cause yeah. they gonna, you want the cameras to zoom in, zoom yeah, in, zoom know, in on his phone. I don't know. I don't know. Are you gonna get in trouble? <laughs> That's all I get. Hey, man, they might lock me up for this shit, oh, man. man. Wait, Let's see. So now, people, you may not understand. Gangster rap, you brought up Too Short. Yeah. Too Short, all that pimp rap, vulgar rap, all of that does not exist without Dolomite from the generation prior to it. No doubt. Nobody, I don't think people, and a lot, I remember people used to get mad, right? I've been in radio since 1990. People used to get mad at Snoop Dogg. They used to get mad at all this shit. But that was from the generation before. That was from the Mac and Dolomite and all of that shit. No doubt. No doubt, E, bro. You know that skit on, uh, the uh, was it the Snoop album? One of those albums. Dr. Dre. Dre album, when he was like, he was like, Daddy. If I had hair on my chest, what would I have? No, he said, said if, I put my, if I put my, um, my nuts, nuts on, on my... the wall, what would those be? Those would be wall nuts. nuts. It, daddy, if I put your nuts on my chest, what would those be? Those would be chest nuts. Well, Daddy, if I put... If my I... balls on my chin, what would it be? He said, you have a <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Y'all never heard that joke? No. That's Rudy Ray Moore. <laughs> what about the signifying monkey? The Four yeah, five, these right? is 1970s. Okay. But this was the dude, this was a guy that was a first Tyler Perry. He Fact. didn't have no money. He shot all his movies low budget in the ghetto in L.A. I, go, go go check him out. His name was Rudy Ray Moore. He had a crew with him, and they did, they did stand-up comedy, and they wouldn't let him in the business because he was too black, and he, he had women walking around with their chests out, naked, and... Man, this movie is crazy. Eddie Murphy did a great job. Eddie Murphy's back. And um, I was just wow, glad to be about it. Yeah. It's gonna come out in a, it's gonna it's, it'll be out in the in the fall. They're gonna start promoting it. It's called Dolomite with Eddie Murphy, me, Wesley Snipes, T.I., uh, uh, Key and Peel. It's all kind of Key and Peel too? With one of the peel, the peel. skin, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Skinny license. Yeah, yeah, peel. He's in it and uh it's yeah, Keegan, yeah, Keegan, yeah, Keegan is in it. He got yeah. too many names. Every time I see his name, oh, shout, I, to, I, shout I, to Peel, Keegan, Michael, Keegan, 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 Peel. Keegan, 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 Peel. Keegan, Michael, Keegan. Yeah. Keegan, Michael, Keegan. Yeah, yeah, he's hilarious in it too. KMK. Man. KMK. <laughs> so it got all kind of hilarious good brothers in the in the film, man. It's 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 That's good. That's cool, man. That's yep. Cool. Yo, man, shout to you, man. Man, thank you, man. Thanks, yeah, yo, shout, shout to, to you, this e, bro. Guy, man. My light skinned cousin, man. Yo, right there, shout, man. shout out to this guy, man. He got the best shirts in the game, man. Yeah, man, I man, got Casey this over shirts. at TJ Maxx. Oh, See, I, that's the thing. Yo, look, I got a philosophy for the for the for the for I'm dressing every day. This is my thing for the summer. Like I'm <laughs> that's on vacation. Nice, that's nice. You know what I mean? Like, every day. You know I mean? Every day, like you on It's summertime. Yeah. Man, you know what I mean? The, the, the exactly. state fair is open. <laughs> y'all give it up Mike Epps is on Netflix thank y'all he's in the uh, Dolomite last black man in San Francisco my man is out here putting it in putting, putting work in man Ebro in the morning hot 9-7 yeah. thank you